That's right, I quit. And I actually did it two years ago. In this video, I'm gonna show you how and why I quit Chad's Custom Creations. I'm gonna reveal my secret Etsy shop, and as a bonus, we will get a sneak peek at the newest offering from RM Laser. We will crunch the numbers and see how these past two years of business compare financially to the years prior. Then maybe I can finally decide if I made the right choice or regret my recent life's decisions. I and most Americans seem to have always been taught that bigger is better, or the more the merrier. But I put that to the test as I closed the doors to the business I've spent the past 10 years growing into a successful, you dream it, I build it type business. Chad's Custom Creations, the business, has been my passion project for over a decade now. It started with humble beginnings, utilizing my homemade dangerous DIY table saw, and majority of my custom products came from the sewing machine of woodworking tools, my late grandfather's scroll saw. It was simpler times back then, but year after year, I added more and more to my catalog of what I could do and what I was willing to build to make a quick buck. As a young wannabe entrepreneur, my favorite word to use for any potential customer or email that came my way asking for something custom to be made was always, yes. I took any and every job that came my way. And of course, like most of us, always undercutting my actual value. Here is a wise saying that I wish I learned way earlier. If you are getting every job, you probably are not charging enough. Throughout the years, I continued to create one-of-a-kind items, and I would photograph and list each product as a new potential listing, which brought in a large variety of new customers from all around the world. It brought about so much success that I was able to leave my educational career and go full-time. With such a large selection of products, I found myself spending more time setting up and taking down between different products emailing back and forth with customers, stuck at the computer designing more and more to make these custom products. I eventually realized that I had bitten off way more than I ever wanted to chew. All right, now hold on a minute. Editing notes here. Now, I'm not saying I did not enjoy getting to make such a large variety of things, because I did. And don't take this as advice as to what you should do with your own business ventures. I just wanted to share my experience in the direction I am choosing to go. There are lots of different paths and options I could take. I would love to hear your thoughts on it. So while you watch, go ahead and leave a comment with what you would have done. But in my eyes, let's face it, I became the cheesecake factory of maker businesses. And I just couldn't keep it up anymore. The huge menu of items that I was offering just became too overwhelming for me. I found myself working way beyond my normal business hours, which cut into the time that I should be present with my family. And even when I was with my family, my mind was not, as I would be stressed out over the work and jobs that still needed to be done. With three young children growing faster than weeds, this led me to rethink my entire business strategy. I shut down Chad's custom creations. I gave my Etsy shop the kiss of death as I set it to the dreaded vacation mode. And I placed my Facebook and Google business pages to temporarily closed. New clients coming my way, I would tell them, for the time being, I am no longer taking on work. But if anything changes, I would make an announcement. I will caveat this by saying that there are still a few big time clients that I've chosen to continue to work with. And you will see why I kept them a little bit later. To keep going with the food industry metaphors, I wanted to attempt to become like Chick-fil-A. If you don't know them, it's a restaurant chain whose success came from focusing on one product, doing it efficiently, and doing it well. The simple chicken sandwich. Today, there are less and less cheesecake factories each year. I researched and found 240 locations in 2022 to just 206 in 2024. 
That's 34 restaurants closed in just two years. While at the same time, Chick-fil-A added a thousand locations over two years and continues to grow with now more than 3,000 establishments currently. This actually came about as an experiment. I wanted to take one of my easiest products, branch it out under a completely new business and just see how it would go. First, I needed a new name. Chad's Custom Creations was intentionally made to be broad. It could literally mean make anything. So I needed to get this new name focused down to what it was and what it does. After brainstorming for a while, I came up with the name Engravings to You. It was simple and described the service it provided. Engravings made shipped directly to your door. I even came up with a simple logo showing a laser head engraving with the name included. My hope was if someone read the logo, they would know exactly what the business did. Who would ever call engravings to you and ask for a farmhouse table? This new business, just like Chick-fil-A, would focus on just one simple product, doing it efficiently and doing it well. My goal was reducing the touch time the time my hands had to be on the product to get it done. Let the machines do the work so I could free up myself, get my time back so I could do the things I really wanted to do. The backbone for success with my businesses has been the RM960, or Big Blue as I like to call it. A big machine which allowed for a lot of versatility and big items. I realized it's way larger than what most can house in their space, and it's bigger than what I even needed to run this new business model of mine. Thanks to all of you, yes, you, the one watching this video right now, the owner of RM Laser asked if I would like to try out his newest machine, which is a smaller and more compact CO2 laser. I figured this would be the perfect machine for showcasing this new business model of mine. As I attempt to simplify my business operation, and maybe this would make it more accessible to those of you wanting to try something like this for yourselves. But don't have a whole two car garage like I do, where I can keep large machines like the RM960. This new machine comes separate from the base. At just 370 pounds, with one or two strong friends, it could be easily set up wherever you want as it can fit through any doorway when tilted up on its side. This is the compact yet mighty J750. Now, I've seen your comments and I know some of you are mad that RM Laser has not posted their prices on their website. They have their reasons for this and there are a lot of factors that go into pricing depending on the location of the customer. But I begged and begged for Ray to let me share a price with you even if it's just an estimate and he did. For customers in the United States, the J750 is about 4299 or depending on your location and such, up to 4,599. Now, remember, it's because of you that this machine was given to me at no cost, so don't blame me. But let's see if I can hypothetically get this whole thing paid off before this video ends. I'll show some recent products that I've made with just this machine, and we can keep a running tally and see if we can get it paid off. So let's set it on the high end and say, we need to pay off $4,600 to get it all completely paid off. And I think it's worth just taking a look at the quality of the build of the machine. Here on the top, we have some tinted tempered glass and a full metal body, as you can hear here. Overall, just the machine itself is built really, really well. This laser uses the industry standard Rowita controller. Yes, that's the one you want and is compatible with Lightburn and RD Works. It uses all high quality components and I especially like how smooth this dimmer knob for the internal LED lights is. It has a two stage air pressure regulator so you can set a high PSI for cutting, which is this knob, and a very low pressure for engraving with this one. A red dot laser pointer off and on switch, a USB memory slot on the front, a 16 megapixel camera built in, an automatic exhaust fan. Using an external air compressor, it has a air to water separator to keep condensation out of the air assist. Locking wheels on the base, 
a compartment under the unit for storing the water chiller to keep everything nice and compact. The laser work area is 27.56 inches by 19.68 inches. With a two inch tall pass through, you can place any length object through. It comes equipped with an authentic 90 watt recce glass laser tube with the same amount of power as Big Blue. My favorite focusing method using the double red dot laser points, which can be easily adjusted to work with other focal length lenses. A motorized up and down table, which can be utilized with the laser software to step down with each pass for cutting extra thick materials. And an advertised engraving speed of 800 millimeters a second and a cutting speed of 500 millimeters a second. You can see all the specs at the link in the description below if you want to find out some more information. And this is not their smallest laser either. They also have the J630, which is a 50 watt CO2 laser, which could be comparable to the size of the Ohmtech Polar, the G White Cloud, or the Glowforge. If you needed something a little bit smaller or affordable, its price currently ranges just around 3200 to about 3500 Even with this smaller machine, I could still run engravings to you as a business. Now, even though I did close Chad's custom creations, I still like to take random odd jobs from time to time, especially the big production ones. Let's take a minute and take a look at some of those jobs using just the J750. So we can see what this thing can do, and then we can start adding to that tally to get this machine paid off. After that, we'll jump right back into engravings to you and see how it is doing over the past two years. First up, we are going to use some of the trees that I cut down in my own backyard. My sister and brother-in-law own a sawmill and offered to mill them up for me. They have a YouTube channel as well called Georgia Woods Homesteading and it would mean the world to me if you would go check them out and let them know I sent you. I'll tag their channel in the description so you can get there easy. I left these boards in the loft of my woodshed, which essentially kiln dried them very quickly. After a while, a big client of mine wanted some live edge signs for his clothing line called Roost. So I cut these boards down to size and threw them into the J750. The built-in camera made aligning the logo with each uniquely sized piece of wood so easy. As I could visually see how each would look before I even sent the job to the laser without having to measure or mark anything. I was able to make 50 of these signs at $40 each, which already gives us $2,000 to put towards paying off the J750. This next job used some more of my live edge lumber. The top of the bench was so long, I had to use the pass through on the laser to be able to engrave on it. I knew this wood would have some engraving inconsistencies, so I masked it off with some masking tape before engraving. So I could spray it with some black primer before coating the entire thing with spray lacquer. This is my third wedding bench that I've made. At the wedding, guests will sign and leave notes on the bench. This one was extra special as I was given a handwritten note of a family member who recently passed away. So I was able to engrave their actual handwriting onto the bench in remembrance of them. And add a silhouette of a duck, which was a symbol of a special bond that these family members shared together. This job is going to add us another $250 to add to our total, leaving us just $2,350 remaining. This is a yearly job that I take with a local church, engraving these trays. The J750 made quick work of these, bringing in $30 each for a total of 90 to add, where we now have just $2,260 left to pay on the J750. I landed another very large production with a local clothing retailer. They needed me to make them these wooden t-shirt hangers with the company's logo engraved on the front. These sold for $35 each for a total of $1,400. But I had about $200 in supplies, so let's just add $1,200 to the remaining balance, bringing us to just $1,060 to pay off. Next, I pulled out my old rotary and attached it to the machine so I could engrave these maple rolling pins. 
I engraved 46 of these and was able to get one out about every minute or so. With a quick application of coconut oil, these brought in $7 a piece. No cost on these as the rolling pins were customer supplied this time around. Then for the same client, I made these laser cut rulers that are specifically used for bakers. I made 36 of these at $7 each. So for this order, I made about $574 and let's say about $14 in acrylic cost, which adds us a total of $560. Now, this is not going to be a paying job, but I thought it came out pretty cool. And you would be amazed how fast you can cut foam core with a CO2 laser. This is a griffin that I cut, assembled, and glued together. Then I took some spray paints and added some color. It was used at the school for a door decorating contest, and I heard that this door actually took the win for the second grade. The same school commissioned me to do some 3D signage above some doorways. I've never done these before, so this was a learning experience for me. I used the stock lens, which I believe has a focal length of two and a half inches. So to get a nice straight cut, I utilized that step down per pass in Lightburn. Though if I had switched out to a four inch focal length lens, Ray told me it would have been able to make a straight cut in just one pass. Even though the edges still came out pretty great. I sprayed lots of coats of primer, especially focusing on the edges, gave them a light sanding, then switched to the requested Sherman Williams Gauntlet Gray. After letting the paint cure, I went on site for the installation, bringing a laser level and taking my time to get everything perfectly straight. I wiped the walls down with isopropyl alcohol and used 3M VHB tape for a permanent placement to the walls. I did three locations at the school, two for the Griffin Hall, and a sign right outside the gym. For this job, I charged $30 per letter and did 25 letters and charged $200 for on-site installation for a total of $900. But let's take off $100 for paint and foam, which leaves us with just $800. Well, if the math is correct, I believe we just paid off the J750 with just six paying laser jobs with $300 left in profit. CO2 lasers are amazing for cutting acrylic, but it can be dangerous as keeping the airflow low will give you a beautiful flame polished edge but there is a higher chance of it catching fire. So always be watching and make sure you are ready at all times. This is a simple three piece acrylic stand that I have designed. It is an add on option for the product that I sell on engravings to you. I can ship these flat packed and the customer can very easily assemble them into a friction fit. Here you can see how the stand works. Like I said earlier, I actually opened up engravings to you two years ago now. If you were a listener to the Working Hands podcast, you may have caught me referencing it as my secret Etsy store. And I closed Chad's Custom Creations just two months after starting it. So lucky for us, I have two years of data we can look at to see if financially this is actually working out for me or not. Well, here it is. My big secret in all its glory, I went from Chad's Custom Creations, a business with over 100 product listings, taking every job that came my way, to Engravings to You, a business solely based on just one product, a simple laser engraved QR code on a piece of plywood, but done well and done efficiently so it can be done at an attractive price. It got its start and essentially grabs all of its traction and sells from being here on Etsy. I have never enabled ads or paid anything extra to market it. Though I have seen Etsy pushing my products and I have gained many customers just from Google search alone, which will contact me directly through my business email, especially the larger clients like restaurants, hotels, resorts, and businesses similar to Airbnb. If you'd like a video sharing my process on how I make these, how I get them out, how I can ship out the same day they were ordered, let me know. I would be uh, okay with sharing that with you all. There might be some of you out there that would consider 
competing with this business. And to that, I say, that's fine. As a business owner, you always need to be ready to pivot and compete with others out there. But I share stuff like this here on YouTube because the pond is really big. Consumers looking for items like this will always be growing. And I've always said, community over competition. But let's get to the financials. How is running engravings to you as a business compared to back in the day when I was hustling full overtime running Chad's custom creations? I spent over four hours combing through my past financial records to collect all of this data so I could share it all with you. I really hope some of you are still here watching. And if you are, would you leave a comment starting with the word avocado just to let me know that you're one of the greats? Again, that word's avocado. Now, I know some of you are going to get upset because I'm not including cost to produce these products, to get them shipped, to just all the costs that are included in revenue. And so for that, I did do a quick breakdown. I can and do buy 10 two foot by two foot sheets of half inch red oak plywood for about $118 all delivered to my front door. And I can turn that into 360 4 inch QR codes that sell for about $10 a piece. This nets me about $3,600 in revenue. Now for the cost, let's say $100 for consumables like sandpaper and spray lacquer and 9.5% for Etsy fees, which is about $342. Most orders under $35, shipping is paid for by the customer, so that leaves us with around Two thousand nine hundred and seventy-eight in profit. I'm sure I'm missing something, and I'm sure you all will let me know about it. But maybe this little breakdown here will be appreciated in some way. Now, now, let's go back three years to 2021, when Chad's Custom Creations was at its prime. It was catering to anyone and everyone with over a hundred different Etsy listings and a backlog of customers to make any grown man cry. In 2021, Etsy brought in $20,758. From other sources like PayPal, Venmo, and handwritten checks, there was 19,351. This brings in a total of 42,829. Now let's compare that to engravings to you, which started officially in February of 2022. So there might be a little overlap here, but in 2022, Etsy brought in 15,386. All the other sources that I stated earlier came out to an astonishing 47,917 for a total of $63,303, if the math is mathing. So that puts engravings to you in the lead by $20,474 more than Chad's custom creations the year prior. But I will say that this was an incredibly busy year. And had I not closed Chad's custom creations, I would have definitely not made it out alive. But how are we doing this last year? Thinking about it now, it felt a lot more relaxed. So in 2023, engravings to you as a business brought only $16,494 on Etsy. But from large clients and everything else, it brought in $24,002. So a pretty good year, but still putting this year in last place for a total of $40,496. With it being... $2,333 less than when I was running Chad's custom creations as a business. All right, so this begs the question, do I regret quitting Chad's custom creations? No, no, I don't. Ready? One, two, three, three.